Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Some special guests, I should yes, say. Division. Man. Yes, yes. I said guest. Division. What up? What up? What up? What's Morning. Good? How you feeling? They How got individual feeling? names. We're good. Dan- 1985. 1985 and Daniel, right? Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Daniel. What's going on? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, Division is here. Welcome. It's your first time here. <clears throat> so for people that don't know who Division is, break down who you are, where y'all from. Um, Division is a singer producer combo. I'm the singer of the group. This is the producer uh, from Toronto. Um, yeah, and we are trying to own R and B right now. Y'all signed the uh, Drake's OVO Sound, right? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. How's that been? You know, a lot of people say artists shouldn't sign the other artists. How, how's that been? Why? Why do you think people say that? I don't know. I'm not an artist. I don't uh, know. <laughs> people usually say that when they sign to an artist, you'll never get bigger than the artist that you actually sign. Uh, oh yeah, who said that recently? Say. But that's, that's not true. Drake, true. Drake, Drake ended up signed to. Yeah, that's what they say. He got signed to Wayne, right? Yeah. It always pans out. I mean, we're we're. We're kind of self-contained, so mm-hmm. we don't really look outside to anybody to like mm-hmm. have to give us the alley oop or you know come in and write the song for us or do anything like that. So we really kind of just stay in our our space, make what we're gonna make, and then kind of go out. We've been lucky to have some dope fans that have kind of really you know help us get to this place and like showed out to all the shows and know the lyrics and the songs and you know. Um, have been supporting the whole thing. I mean, Angela, you know, she's she's yeah. I've always right. loved Division. So, it's been yeah. dope. Let me yeah. ask you this though: When you guys, when Drake debuted, you guys on Over Your Radio, was, yeah. did you already know like was the deal done? No. Or, okay. No, so how no. did all of that happen? And at that point, I was working with him. We were working on Views, I think. Mm-hmm. That's why we were working on the Views album, and um, I got a spot to do like a DJ segment on Over Your Sound Radio. So I was like, I'll play whatever I want. So I might as well play my own group. Hell yeah. Makes sense. Do, do y'all feel like he stands next to y'all the way, the way that he should? Because, you know, you look at other artists that are signed to other artists, like you'll see Ross with his guys, or you mm-hmm. saw Hove with his guys back then. Even Wayne, Wayne is the greatest example, always stood next to Young Money. Do y'all mm-hmm. feel like he stands next to y'all the way he should? I feel like it's it's that's up to everybody else to kind of, like, figure out what they think is what they should. As far as we, we feel, mm-hmm. we just... We are thankful for anything that we get at this point. You know, anybody that that has given us the the opportunities that that have helped us get here, we're just thankful for. Like in the beginning, right when we signed, he not only put us on Views, mm-hmm. which was one of the you know biggest albums at the time, obviously. Mm-hmm. And right after that, we were on a tour with him. We did Summer '16, right? So that alone, it's like whether you whether whatever, however much you stand, you post, you. Instagram or mm-hmm. you don't like he's giving you the opportunity yeah we, 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 we're thankful for it we just take anything and, and turn it into energy right. when people were trying to figure out who Division was at first what were some of the craziest things you heard because it was a lot of like who is Division how many yeah, people yeah. are in the group I mean people thought that people thought he was singing for a while people thought it was me singing <laughs> <laughs> Remember people that, thought right? it was him singing because he had kind of had a name already he did Hotline Bling he did Too Much he did what else did you have at the time? Hold on, free. we're going home. Hold on, we're going free. home. Truffle oh, butter. you got some money, bro. Let me hold some. <laughs> Let me hold a little something. I just want to get a little protein so shake he, this morning. He already had all that. So <laughs> by the time, by the time people were trying to figure out division, they were trying. They were confused about whether it was him, whether there was like a huge group behind it because they heard like girl voices and choir voices because we usually used the choir in songs like like too deep and stuff like that. So I think people were kind of like, oh, is there girls in it? Is there guys? Is it what is it? And you know, it was it was me singing and him producing. Too Deep is one of my favorite songs to put on like a, a love making type of playlist, mm-hmm. right? So can you talk about the meaning behind that? Cause you try to say it's not about like not pulling out. No, it is, but it's the double meaning. Cause it's, it, 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 <laughs> it plays on, you know, when you're in too deep into, you know, a relationship, anything, a situation, you don't want to pull, pull back, you know? So <laughs> it's like, we're here, like, let's, Let's live in the moment. That's so clever. I really just was like, man, they're not pulling out. We're in TV. <laughs> but then, yes, it is a yeah, no, it's a, this is just a double. That's good for people to know that because then you know that uh, the, if I get caught record, ain't the first toxic record y'all made. Then uh, wh- why is too deep toxic? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to pull to- out. 
That's toxic. What is the de- who, what is the definition hey, of toxic? Hey, don't you argue with me about toxic records <laughs> yeah, this morning, what, sir? What is All the right? definition of toxic? Not pulling out is toxic. Depends now? who the person is. Childbirth and beautiful procreation. A, is, ran, a random person. On. A random <laughs> woman. Did, did I say random? random? Who said that? Oh, okay. How many well, times you, 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 you have to have context then. You That's can't. A beautiful just, song. You, well, you didn't say that, G. You just said it's a no, song about not pulling out. I said I always have it on my love making playlist. It's a nice song. Love making. Okay. Love. Okay. A couple of times. I'm married. Do y'all ever listen to your own music? Like when you're with. Sex? No. No, never. Never? That'd you don't want to hear Daniel's voice yeah. like that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> can't do it. You can't do it. Definitely can't do it. That's like jacking off and looking in the mirror. Try to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> That's wild. How did, you, how did you hook up with Jermaine Dupree? And whose idea was if I get mm-hmm. caught? Okay. J- Jermaine was, well, shout out to our, our management team, LVRN. Um, they they kind of put together the first session. And it was it just ended up being me and Jermaine just, just there. And Toronto really, or Atlanta? In Atlanta, mm-hmm. in Atlanta, at Southside. And um, yeah, literally, you could fast forward maybe 72 hours and it felt like we were like brothers. Like that was just like, it became like a big brother. You, you know what you know what you mean, vibe, right? So, you know, it's it, the relationship just kind of grew and grew and grew. It's like I'm, you know, I'm having Christmas and New Year's Eve at his house, just me, him, Miss Tina, like him and his mom, you know, like the, the relationship just really built and um, if I get caught, was already we were already a bunch of records deep into this project that we're doing. And um, one day we opened the, the studio door, and he's just humming away. As soon as he opened the door, he's like, I don't mean I don't love you. And I was like, like what? The, what did you just say? Like, and I'm like, that's exactly what I want to say. How did? What is that? And so he walks in the studio. B. Cox is already there play, playing strings and keys and stuff. And 85 came up with this idea of like, he's like, yo, the way we use choir, girl choirs, what if we flip it and make it a bunch of guys singing this and make it like a chant? And I was like, oh my God. And then I sat down and I wrote these verses. Now, the song, I think, I think that <laughs> on first listen, you people hear one thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe even second and third. Maybe even watching to the honest. video too. <laughs> now the video gives it, the video gives it more context. A little bit more context, mm-hmm. but I I still feel like um, some people are still a little bit confused about what I'm actually talking about. Well, mm-hmm. explain. Cause is it safe to say that record is toxic? No, no. definitely oh, not. Okay, nothing, I'd like to hear nothing, this. Nothing one. toxic about that record. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, everybody, well, before you explain, continue <laughs> with the story. Yeah. How the Jay Z sample came about and all that. Oh, okay. Uh, you want to say that first? Uh, with the Jay Z sample, we were kind of just talking back and forth, and I was like, yo. What if we use that line from Song Cry and cut it up? And I'm like, mm, I don't know if we're going to get that cleared. And Jermaine's like, yo, you do what you got to do. I'll make those calls. I'm like, you sure? He's like, yeah, you leave that to me. So I did it. And um, still, I was kind of thinking, I don't know if we're going to get this to go. And then in the group chat, he just he sent that, that same thing that we posted. And I was like, oh, wow. That's part of the reason Jermaine's why people been- think it's toxic, too, because Jay-Z said it. Yeah. Like, no, no. Well, you're right. Oh yeah, yeah, but because he right. kind of set the is... stage for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, but... this is even more toxic than. So this is whole yeah. fault. Yeah, it's his fault. <laughs> I, he... I I just hear more women saying that than anything. Nah, it's honestly, it's not, it's not toxic at all. It, explain. It, I'll explain. So, <laughs> um, people hear the song and they think I'm saying, "Yo, I'm cheating on you. Eat that or hold that." Mm-hmm. You know, kind mm-hmm. of that kind of vibe. Um, the record for one is not talking about a guy that's cheating at all. The whole song is me talking about being in a situation with somebody who f- starts to feel like maybe their person is cheating on them. And I start to address it from the standpoint of somebody that's like noticing that, yo, everything that used to attract you, that attracted you to me has now turned into your insecurity. Yeah, you wouldn't want me if other girls didn't want me. Yeah, the whole idea of like, yo, I was... I dressed well when you met me. Now it's where you're getting dressed and where you're going. You know, it was I was charismatic and fun to be around when you went out when you met me. Now it's like, oh, you're always in people's face. You always gotta talk. We always you always gotta be entertaining people. You always wanna be so funny. I think it's the part I was fucking them girls. I was gonna get right. I no, didn't say that. It's not that part. It's the it's the it's the hook. I mean even, even with everything. So, so let me so, keep, so let let me keep going. hypothetical right. what you're saying. Let me keep okay. going. No, everything is me addressing like this is why you like this me. is this all the things that have turned into and I'm sure we can all mm-hmm. be in situations that men mm-hmm. and women right. right where it's like everything that you liked about me 
you are now have not turned to your insecurities because you realize other people like them about me. Correct. Like I always right? wash my penis in the sink when I come home. You oh, like come you. on, wow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I've actually never done that for the record. <laughs> you haven't done the little bird no, bath? I've never, I've like, never oh, done man, the, 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 the penis thing. Um, You're not going to give no context to that? You're just going to That's tell. what people do. You know when guys cheat and then they come home and just bite it. We don't know. I thought it was personal too. I was like, damn. We have no I'm like, idea. I know y'all cool. Maybe y'all, I, that's wild. No, like, guys do that when they cheat. They wash their penis in the sink. Because they Who just does clean that? that. Why don't they can they just take a regular shower? Exactly. They're what is she talking about? Because they not to get caught. They don't want to run home and take a shower. That's what she... You take a shower where you at? Has this happened to you before? I don't know if it's happened because I w- haven't witnessed it, but I know guys you know, have said that right. they just... So bird bath. It's okay. called a bird bath when guys okay. just I've wash... Heard I never heard that one either. <laughs> All right, so back, <laughs> sorry. In the urban so back to the... I'm a guy. To penis in the sink and wash <laughs> You're a guy, right? <laughs> Aren't y'all guys? Yeah, yeah I've never I, put my dick I'm, in the sink. <laughs> I'm sorry, penis in the sink. Sorry, my bad. Uh, <laughs> but let, let me get back to what I was saying. Let me get back to what I was saying. So now the insecurity has turned to the point where it's like, you're digging through phones, you're checking laptops, you're doing all these th- these things to try to find something, right? And then you have to get into the psychology of trying to find something. It's like, are you trying to find something to be upset or are you trying to find something so you can find a way to leave, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And my whole thing with this is, okay, so if it's to leave, why would you, why, why would you want to leave somebody because when even if I was to have done this, if, Mm-hmm. Hypothetically, I was to do, done this. It wouldn't be because I, I all of a sudden fell out of love with you. Mm-hmm. It would be because I was being a selfish idiot and maybe did some stupid, some stupid things I shouldn't have done. Self indulging, freaking um, being caught up in my ego, maybe trying to stroke my own ego, make myself feel good. There's a bunch of reasons that people That's cheat. Right. You're I don't think right. I don't think people cheat just because all of a sudden I lot people don't think oh I'm not in, uh, guys don't think I'm not, I'm not in love with you anymore so now I'm going to go have sex mm-hmm. that's not what it is we can we can have the, the the whole woman that we want and still be outside doing stupid things mm-hmm. be doing that's what the song is about yeah I agree with you. I think men cheat purely for ego it's, you know I, what I mean? Like I know every time that I did it back in the day, it was literally because I had a, a wounded ego. Like it's like it's like pouring water into a cup that got a hole in it. Exactly. So it never it never fills. fills. It yeah, never yeah. fills, right? So I think that what it, what what, oh, what did you find? My best apple water. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um oh shit, I lost my point. Don't let one mistake ruin everything. Oh, I would I, yeah. Well, I definitely wouldn't want that to happen. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not saying that it can't though, because at the end of the day, it's it's up to you. It's it's everyone's individual decision whether or yeah. not if you, you want to stay get or caught, leave. I can have a choice now. Yeah, I you can, now have the choice. You stay and work it out, or I can leave. The hook, which makes people the Jay Z yeah. sample, which makes people make it. No, seem it's like not it's just the Jay Z sample because even even them girls. I was no, but get, even like, even with like, everything you're saying, I understand the hypothetical. But when you tell a woman, but the truth is, if I do get caught cheating, that don't mean I, I don't love it. I wouldn't even bring that hypothetical up. Yeah, because you don't want to have that honest conversation. And that's what triggered everybody online. But I don't want to have the conversation because I'm not cheating. It, that's fine. Yeah. But most people don't want to have the conversation because they've been down there. They've been down that road. They've had to deal with cheating. Mm-hmm. They either have to have have a past with it. Somebody did that to them. Somebody, someone someone hurt them there. Someone's left uh, uh, some PTSD there. Absolutely. And that's, what, that's what's caused this, this stir. It's right. triggering. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a trigger. trigger. So, yeah? I'm a, please. I played it one time for my wife just to let her hear it. She ain't want to hear that shit. Nope. That shit is too triggered. Turn that shit the fuck up. Yeah, off. yeah. You can't, you're like, what's wrong with you? I was like, ah, you know, they young. I said, oh, they young. You know, they, they going through it. No, but, it, but, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but let me ask you guys this. Yes, sir. Do you guys disagree or agree with that statement? What, if I don't get... That you don't have to fall out of love with somebody. Oh, yeah, that's an old school. Listen, by the way, that's a, that's okay. a goldie. That's, so, a, that's a golden oldie. That's a, I think that... And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a classic <laughs> line. That's so a, then what are we really talking about is toxic, or do we just replace toxic toxic with honest? I think it's the other part where you say it's just one little fuck. See, I can relate to it. If I get caught cheating, that don't mean I don't love you. We've all said that before. Mm-hmm. Correct. I ain't never told my wife, it was, oh, it was just one little fuck. Because remember, she hit, hit you back with like, well, I gave somebody head, it was one little suck. Yeah, if she did, you know, the, the, the exact same. same. <laughs> oh man, shut up! The man. exact same, the exact same, the exact same the situation. Same I'm, yeah. now, I'm now in a position where it's like, okay, do I? Am I gonna stay? Am I gonna leave? Am I gonna? What am I gonna do here? I it's the it. same thing. Okay. Is it frustrating to you that this song got so much attention when mm-hmm. you guys put it out, and then people 
for some people they that might be the first like listen of division and first time like, I heard it yeah yeah and they're like these guys are super toxic yeah. and yeah no you know honest it, it got us here we had the Breakfast Club like, <laughs> y'all could have been on the Breakfast you know Club I mean? hey I never got an invite Charlemagne oh. I didn't uh-huh. know. He's cool with you. He, that's but, right. he, he don't invite he, us up here. Oh, that's <laughs> no, listen. I did, I did, I did I'm lip service playing. twice. I'm with playing. Y'all. That's true. Even before she, she you, we like, had a former producer. Her name was Sasha. Sasha loves y'all. Long time ago. Long, long time ago. I think before y'all signed with, with with Drake, I was gonna ask: Are y'all in relationships? No, no. Currently. I was about to say. I was gonna say: What, what did y'all girls feel about it? No, no, no. no. But we, I mean, we've we've heard the women. Yeah, we've definitely <laughs> heard the clear. women. People Loud are like, "What about hallucinations? How could you make that song?" And then I think there's been a lot of women that. Immediately, there's the triggering effect mm-hmm. of it, and they're like, "I can't believe you guys are out here promoting like a cheater's anthem with a whole bunch of guys on the hook." And then there's the other women that are like, "You know what? I I can see why you would say this because you know I've been in a situation like that before, or mm-hmm. I've done it myself." You know, there's a lot of women now. Not at first, as the days go by, mm-hmm. there's a lot of women now kind of kind of coming out and be like, "Yeah, I've done that." <laughs> Those I've, whores. A hundred percent. A hundred percent it's happened. <laughs> like like um I right after we dropped it, we I got a DM um from from a lady saying, you know, um, I love the song, it's super catchy, it's this and this and that. Congratulations. I you know, I just can't play it in the house. I, I cheated on my husband. Oh yeah, you can't and and you know, he he stayed with me. And I said, you know what? I, I, if you don't mind me asking, like, you know, why did you cheat? Because that, that's really what I'm trying to get at here. Mm-hmm. So we, we're trying to talk about some conversations. And I was like, why did you cheat? And she was like, I just had a baby a little while before. You know, me and him were having our little, you know, times where it's just kind of like we're just involved in our own lives. And um, an old fling that I used to talk to. Um, you know, he popped back up and he started, you know, asking me for selfies and pictures and it made me feel sexy again. And I, again, right, as soon as she said that, I was like, it's it's the ego over there too. That's right. Mm-hmm. It goes both ways, right? And nowadays it's like, if we're being honest, in 2022, women are cheating just as much, if not <gasps> more than men. I don't think they ever stop. I think now, how did you come did. up with this statistic? Yeah. I got this from Nick a sex Cannon. therapist. Exactly. You and Nick Cannon yeah. got this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He watched it. <laughs> we got these from actual <laughs> professionals. <laughs> 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 you think women cheat more than men? I, it's, I'm, no, I'm not saying I think. This is what I was told from somebody who has studied. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling, giving you guys what the information is. Cite these sources, bro. I don't know about that. <laughs> like that you women, saw. Have you women. ever cheated on a woman before? Yeah. Hell yeah. And what was the reason? Was it the <laughs> Goodness gracious. He <laughs> said, hell yeah. He's like, oh, hell no. Just, <laughs> How could he write this song? Yeah, like what? No, I've... I've and y'all wash your penis in the sink. Wow. They're not oh married, though, no, bro. They're not, like, they're not married. No, I've... I've um, <laughs> I've been on all sides of that. I've been on the side where I've done it and... Been on the side where I've done it and got caught. Mm-hmm. I've been on the side of it where I've done it and not got caught. Mm-hmm. I've been on the side where I'm pretty sure it happened to me, you know. So that's why I I, I speak about it because it's like this is this is a real thing. If if this was just some song that had no validity to it, people would just ignore it. it would, would you want someone it, to tell you if they cheated on you? Absolutely. You would want them to tell you. Like, absolutely. If I already didn't know, I don't know. If, uh, that's no, because that happened to you, right? No, I, I want to know. You want to know? Be- because yeah. I also they've said. I've seen this in um, on television. They said if you don't get caught, you shouldn't tell because that's really to relieve your own guilt, and all it's going to do is cause problems. Yeah, I feel like if we're good and I am not suspecting something, you telling me is probably going to put me in a position of having like doubts. Yeah. Okay. You wouldn't respect the honesty. I. I, ah. I it really depends where we're at because some of these things I feel like. Certain seeds, once they're once they're planted, you can't stop it from growing. Mm-hmm. So if it wasn't already growing for me, I might be better off just not knowing. Why mm-hmm. fuck up my life? Yeah, like right. why have yeah, that like doubt? Why, Especially if if let's let's say you did it, you're 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 not gonna do it again. It was a mistake. I'm with you. I don't want to. I think a lot of times the reason we come clean is because like our conscience is eating us up so much, and we end up projecting, you know, our guilt onto our significant others. For so sure. we start saying that blaming them for stuff and saying that they're doing stuff that yeah. they're not doing because of what we're doing. So we want to just get that off our, mm-hmm. our chest. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. I get it. 
But what's, yeah. what song comes after this now? Now, see, okay, so that that's because it has to be. A, that's a, a great question. Yeah, that's a great question. This, she this done, album, she done ruined all your clothes. She done, JD, <laughs> she done messed up all your clothes. Oh no, for in the sure. Video. This album mm-hmm. is this album is a story. Mm-hmm. Um, we started at the ego, right, and then naturally it goes to all the places where that can get you. You know, um, there's there's reflection, there's accountability, there's remorse, there's growth, there's um, you know, hopefully re- reapproaching all these things and situations that that you may have failed at in the in the past. Um the next record is a step in that direction. I'm not gonna say too much about it. Mm-hmm. It's definitely super R and B, def produced by J D, produced by B Cox, produced by nineteen eighty five. And um it's uh no it's special. It's special. Here's I what I like about the record. Yeah. And and we had you know we had some debates about this a couple of weeks ago. It's so hard to put out music and and have people care, Mm -hmm. right? Even if the music is banging. Mm -hmm. So the fact that y'all started a conversation, regardless of how people feel about the record, the fact that it started a large conversation, that's a win. No, for sure. That's that's one of the reasons we, well, that's probably the main reason we put this song out. We've had the song for about six months, and we would have people come by the studio. We'd play a bunch of records, and even though there would be a lot of people that said they had other songs as their favorite, that song got people talking, mm-hmm. and we'd have huge debates for hours sometimes about that record. We were the like, whole you know, would just break out an argument. Maybe that's what we, we need. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we need to start the conversation, and then we'll fill in the other pieces later. Because there's definitely songs that would have fit the R and B story better, mm-hmm. would have fit the traditional division, you know, path mm-hmm. way better. Mm-hmm. But we need we need to start these conversations and have people kind of tune in. You know, and I've seen a lot of people say like, "Oh, I think Division just did this." Because, you know, for the attention or for the conversation. So? But, but at the same time, it's like if people weren't talking about what we were doing before, is that our fault or yours? Yeah, and y'all are artists at mm-hmm. the end of the day. So there is marketing. So what's wrong with throwing something out there that you know people are going to get people talking? Isn't that the point? It, not only that, but for me, it's like, how, how, how are we ever going to progress if we don't start having the conversation as a people? You know, like as relationships period if we just try to keep trying to ignore things never understand the other the other one we're never going to get anywhere so for us it was important to be like we know what conversations come from this we know where it takes us and that's the that's the way that we're going to start breaking down the relationship to start reconstructing the relationship mm-hmm. You, so. How do you think their response would be if a woman put that song, this song out? It's I think coming. you guys would. You guys would. Lo- you guys would. Are you much. guys? Cur- I, it would be. I'm just asking. <laughs> you know it's coming. They've already, they've, already, doing. they've already started doing responses <laughs> to, yeah, to ours, I so, and, and I see the girls as soon as they hear it, the girls are like, "Yes, <laughs> go, <laughs> yes, bitch, oh, you talk yeah, your we, shit." They love it. Just as crazy. Women's women's worse. Women <laughs> like, are getting away <laughs> with a lot right now. When Scissor said, "I'll you know I'll have you on the weekend," and then you can go back to whatever you're doing throughout the week. Like, isn't that kind of crazy? Well, side chick anthems have been around for a I long know, time. I'm like, saying, isn't that kind of crazy? Because somebody's yeah. cheating in that scenario. <laughs> like SWV, like uh, I'm so into you, all of those records. Like those my little secret. My I like being. I like being in the same room with you and your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. The fact that she don't know really turn me on. Yeah. Like it, it, it. I think that it, I think that it would go. It would. It would go super crazy. I mean, we're we're fortunate to that that the tide is kind of you know shifted as far as. It went from like shock and almost outrage to like people being like, "But it's a bop, though." You know, or people like, "Oh, it's stupid, catchy to my to my head." And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I like the song, and and it's a lot of women now that are ad- ad- admitting and the ones putting the selfie videos up and playing the song. So it's beautiful. I mean, yesterday we found out, you know, it's the the number one most added song on Urban Radio for this week. So, wow. Like, you know, the only but, thing I didn't like about the record was the sample. To be honest with you, you I didn't think you it didn't needed. Like, nah, I, I like the hook. I mean, the hook was better. Oh, you just oh you didn't like just, the Jay Z sample. You just think it wasn't necessary. No, nah. oh, mm. I, I still love that. That made me feel extra. Good. I'm I'm a hip hop head though, so mm-hmm. that just made me feel like and just even just to read text between Jay, Jay and, and JD, JD yeah. for, just for that 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 sake alone. I mean, we're we're happy. Did Jay alone. tell JD to put that text out? Was that part of the rollout? <laughs> like, Jay, no, uh, Jay didn't tell him to do it. Jay didn't tell him but to like, sure put this out. I'm saying did he ask? Yeah, I'm Jermaine. sure. I'm sure Jermaine's Jermaine. Yeah, sure. Jermaine ain't just gonna do that. Yeah. What do you think about this generation of R&B? Um, I think we're gonna be in great hands with Division. I think this generation of R and B listener is mm-hmm. different than before. Before wow. people would all kind of flock to the same thing. Now there's so many different types of R and B that you can get into, but people keep complaining 
about the one they want to hear not being the biggest. Mm. But it's like you can go and listen to whatever you want. It's there. I there's, love the R and B that's out right now. Honestly, yeah, there's, there's so much to to take in. But there's always this conversation of, oh, it's not like the 90s. It's not like the 2000s. But even that stuff, it's around. Like, mm -hmm. you can find it. I think it's just so much easier to focus on the toxic R&B or the not as singer, songwriter oriented R&B and be like, oh, this isn't what I'm used to. I think a lot of times it's just too much music. It's so a lot music. to consume. That's a fact. Right? So you don't sit with stuff right. as, as much. You know what I mean? But I will say this, no matter what party I'm DJing, if it's a a, a 21 year old party, an 18 year old party, or a 30 year old party, they know everything from Can't Stand the Rain to, you know, uh, to they grew up on that with their parents, and to, uncles, you know, to SZA, I mean, yeah. to y'all. So I All think right. that's dope too. It's, it's music that sticks, you know? And as far as toxic content, it's always been toxic content. I just think the only difference is the, the presentation now. Like some of these R&B singers be rapping instead of singing it. Facts. You know what I mean? A lot, of, a lot of these singers, a lot of the singers, they're not really singers. People yeah. that, you know. We like to hear toxic songs sung beautifully. There you go. I think. There you go. Like if you think about like Secret Lovers back in the mm -hmm. day, and like I said, Whitney Houston, Saving All My Love for You. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, he's with his family, and I'm here waiting mm -hmm. for you. Did you all ever those songs are sung beautifully, but what are they about? Yeah. Did you ever think about putting Future on the record? No. Never. No. <laughs> too much. No. 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 That would be too much. Shout, shout out to Future though. Shout out to Future. That's that, that's the homie. But um. No, nah, we we wanted this. I mean, it has such a it has such a traditional R and B um, vibe to it when it's stripped down. I think it's the big eight oh eights and the thing that makes it you know. But that's good because it, it's what has people singing it in the clubs and right. bumping it out, right? But um, at the core of it, it's like three four timing ballad. That, like Jermaine was in there really like on some like blues, you know, when he made that record. So. When he made that, sorry, that hook and that that that, that part of it. So, um, I wasn't I wasn't imagining some uh, any like a, a trap rapper or mm -hmm. you know any of that. I just he, he wanted to make sure that this was an R&B record. He's so proud to be like, yo, they're playing an R&B record in Magic right now, mm -hmm. and it's going off like like a little baby record mm -hmm. in here, you know. And it's an R&B like we're making R&B important, like, mm. and it's beautiful to see his his passion like fueled like that and to be you know the vessel it's dope i want to talk to talk about y'all just as artists like mm -hmm. like how, well first of all how important is drake to the toronto music scene is there a path for division without a drake really drake? is the toronto music scene mm -hmm. you know because before that there was not a scene that you guys would have known yeah you know like, i mean you, i can you, think like cardinal official yeah, you, you knew people, people but there wasn't yeah. necessarily a scene yeah you know it was just like oh wait you're from toronto right Oh, Deborah Cox. Oh, she's from Toronto. Mm -hmm. But there was no, there was nothing that you could kind of attach to anything. Yeah. I now think... it's like there's a sound. You know all of our producers. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we have a few R and B artists. Um, as far as what people attach to Drake, is the whole, um, I guess, like the, the, honest and moodiness that came with it has almost become like the toronto sound but that's in everything though mm -hmm. like across the board like you go to the uk it's there you go mm -hmm. to atlanta it's there you go to la it's there and i think with that comes the expectation that everything is going to have some sort of drake lineage which in some ways it does because it's like he's the one that like opened the door for everybody mm -hmm. like literally everybody coming out of toronto mm -hmm. has to on some level be like yeah drake's Drake's the guy. Mm -hmm. you and know? to your point, he, he created a scene. He gave us a scene, yeah. a visual, to like, oh, okay, there's something going on there. So so what about you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody's, I think everybody, all the artists out of Toronto, they, they're all talented enough to have, you know, um, broken through at some point or had somebody notice and really be like, oh, this person, like, you know, from the weekend to, you know, um, Tory, Daniel Caesar, every, everybody that's from Toronto. But mm -hmm. party... Um, but Drake kind of like put C4 on the door and kind of blew it open for mm -hmm. everyone to kind of run in. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think anybody in the city would ever try and take that from him. No. What did he think about this record? Did you send it to him first? And we have we have literally have not talked to anybody about any song on this project yet at all. Really? Literally, we've, we're, I'm telling you, we've just been in Southside 
just literally in our own zone. So you know, it's a good question. We should we should, you should <laughs> hit, hit him up and be like, yo, what's going on? But I mean, <laughs> you know, um, I I'm 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 positive he's he's seeing and hearing, you know, what's going on, and you know, he's he's always, um, I would I would think always happy when you know this not only the city gets a win, but when you know the team gets a win. I like that you guys are like you said just kind of like doing your own thing and being successful without feeling like you have to rely mm -hmm. on a co-sign. Yeah, like don't, still doing sold out shows. Like you said, everybody's singing the lyrics and people know you and it's not like, we gotta get Drake on the record in order for this to pop up. Some people don't even make that correlation. They just think division's division. I know? think that's And I love that. I love mm -hmm. I love the fact that we, we stand behind our brand that strong and we are able to, you know, just stand on our own too. You know, everybody's stronger if you can you can do that, I think. So what was the vision doing prior to all of this? Like, what's the scene like in Toronto when you're just some aspiring artist trying to get on? Is it open mics? Is it going to the radio station with your uh, music? Like, yeah, what is it? it, it, it this, this whole city was like that. The, 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 there's one radio station that will play your music. We was on that for a little bit, for like a little, <laughs> little, little Yeah, you, little, you were, you were, you were, yeah. Little, little. Um, <laughs> I think we was talking about Donald Trump too much at the time, and it got us right out of there. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was like that, you know. It's 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 really it's super crab and it's a, almost like what, you, what people used to hear about New York and other places, mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere type thing. Because literally nobody was making it. Gotcha. There was nobody that had made it. Wow. It's like, and we've been here just as long as everyone else. So that's why the city's kind of in its own special thing, because it's almost like we waited mm -hmm. way longer than everyone else. And I know you guys, for you guys, it's like, you know, Canada over there somewhere. But because we're so close to New York, we and we have New York stations, Buffalo stations, US TV, we feel like we're right there. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we're almost watching every city blow up before us and nothing happening over here. So I think the whole city was kind of almost clicking up on their own, trying to be the first to make it. And if you weren't a part of them, then you know whatever, we don't care. So it wasn't a, it was not a huge support um, as far as the locals until you, until Drake happened. And when Drake happened, and it started becoming cooler to say, hey, you know, they did it. I mean, we did it. You know, to start feeling that. Gotcha. That ownership with things, that's when things started really changing the city. Like now it's like, you know, the city loves Division. The city loves, you know, Drake, uh, XO, everybody like that. So it's just You guys also did that whole collab with Ty Dolla Sign. Cheers to the best mm -hmm, memories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so mixed How was that balance working with Ty Dolla Sign, you know, and going and doing a whole project with him and even making that decision? First off, Ty is crazy. <laughs> Ty is, Ty bounces off off the wall every day it's 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 crazy his his creative process is nuts like he'll literally sit there and make easily make six seven songs a day every day every day every single day he is the kind of guy that'll be like yo come to the studio <coughs> at seven you'll come to the studio at seven and he'll call me i'm outside he'll be like oh I, I'm, I'm in oakland <laughs> what, what? <laughs> like, you know he's that kind of guy he's just like he's so in the moment and he's such a creative that it's it's um i don't know it's 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 hilarious to watch but he's that that process that we had was literally came about because of that cuz he told me to come out there and do a record with him so i flew out he was on tour hopped on the tour bus he's like i got a studio on the tour bus cool let's make a song sat in the back 3 days later we have five songs he's talking about putting out an ep together and i was just like this is not what we what the plan was. You know, mm -hmm. every day with him is like a, a whole new adventure. Shout out to Ty, by the way. But a whole new adventure that he just like head first jumps into, which mm -hmm. which I think is what keeps his energy in the songs and his like spontaneousness so high. Cause you can hear it in the records, right? He's just kinda like, it's whatever. He can be on a rock song one day, a EDM song the next day, a you know, a, a hip hop song and then break it down and just do R and B. When did you guys do I Believed It? Because Mac Miller is featured on that song. I think that's such a standout song. Mm -hmm. right, that, was right, that was right before he passed. Literally right before he passed. Mm -hmm. When we got his final verse, because he came to the studio. Mac came to the studio, um, heard the record, loved it, started recording, and then he left and he's like, I don't really like my verse. I'm, I'm going to send another one. Sent another one back in, a, in maybe like a week, 
and like three days after that he was gone. Damn. So it was it was uh it was tough. It was tough and I was just getting to really know him and you know um understand how why he was such a loved person cuz when once you get around him you're just like oh yeah. this guy's dope. Good dude. You know, good, yeah, dude. good dude. How much how much other work have y'all done behind the scenes in the industry? Like you as far as production writing? Um I done a lot. I did uh one dance. I did get along better on the last Drake album. I did Truffle Butter. I did on the way. Khalid Ka- Ka- oh, yeah. Black on the Ty. Way. <clears throat> I did. Um, what else did I do? <laughs> I've done so many things. I I did the Bryson Tiller Drake single. I did. Oh, I did. Uh, Get the fuck out for Mariah Carey. Mm. Mm. I did. I've done so many, so many things that I just kind of like. I do it, mm-hmm. keep it moving. But it's kind of been interesting the last few years because, like, I feel like I have a whole double career that people don't know. Like people who know me as 1985 the producer, a lot of times don't necessarily know I'm in Division. Mm-hmm. People that know me from Division don't necessarily know like I've been making hits on the other side of mm-hmm. things. So whenever they they hear the two come together, they're like, "Oh, like how do you mm-hmm. like how do you even have time to balance that?" I'm like, mm-hmm. honestly, I don't even know how I do it because I'm just like going back and so forth. Besides division, besides Drake, who do you like to work with more creative and why? Who do I like to work with? Um, I loved working with Travis. I did um, Coffee Bean on Astro World. Mm-hmm. Um, Future. I did Tricks on Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else do I love working with? You've been out here, huh? No, I'm out here. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm out here. Can you sing at all? I can sing enough to tell him what to sing. But Have I you can't. ever done a reference track and been like, I should sing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, like, I can tell somebody, like, sing it like this. Right. But have I done a reference track? I maybe recorded something just for someone to, like, mimic that. But Have I you ever been like, I might want to just hop on this a little something? Yes and no. Like, I do that in my own <laughs> Dan, time. Danny's like, this is the first time I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've done that in my own time because I, I'm just, like, that creative. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've made records before and I've recorded myself. I've rapped. I've sung. Um, I used to be in a punk band. Um, I My thing is, if I were to do that, I wouldn't necessarily want to be in producer mode while doing that at the same time. But I love producing. And the punk band, did you play an instrument? or? Did yeah, you... I uh, I was the backup singer and the guitar player. And I wrote all the songs. What was the band's name? We had a, hor- a bunch of horrible names. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> coffee Double the Cream, all types of things. <laughs> the, the, the worst. Ooh. The worst. That is a bad Coffee Double the Cream. <laughs> that didn't happen. It happened. Coffee Double the Cream? We what? don't need to speak Nobody about says that. Nobody comes up in the room, I mean, so it's going to be the name of it. Was, black was it you and two white guys? You and two white guys? No, it was. He just said yes. It was. Yes. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I was yeah. the black guy in the back. Yeah. You were the coffee. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. He was the token black guy. No, on that note, can we wow. look this up and find this online? Like, can we hear some songs online? <laughs> mm, no, I don't. Can you know it? I'm going to have to look this up. Coffee Double the Crown. Did you ever hear any of this? or No. He said no. <laughs> is the industry all every, life. is the industry everything y'all thought it would be thus far? Yeah, I think so. Uh, everything and not at the same time. Like it's it's everything they told. Like you would hear people talking about. I think you just didn't realize how much it really is that. And mm-hmm. I I really learned that when um, I remember people always used to tell me you don't want to meet your idols. And then I met a certain producer artist. I won't name them. And that experience, I was like, oh, that's not mm-hmm. what I was hoping it would be. You know, I had such high expectations, mm-hmm. and then it was a bit of a letdown. And that's why even us working with Jermaine has been so amazing, because he is exactly who you what would you hope thought? him to be. You know, where a lot of people do not. You know, the industry, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Or maybe that is them. You know what I mean? Maybe that is them. You just thought something differently. Yeah. I wonder, should we have expectations with people? Like, when, when, when people don't meet our expectations, is that our fault or their fault? Because it's, no, it's our expectation. That's our fault. That's our fault. Yeah. And because the expectation is an assumption, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of that goes into who you think they are as an artist or who you think they're projecting to the world as mm-hmm. whatever. Meanwhile, that might just be their stage person. Correct. Mm-hmm. You know, that's their mm-hmm. their forward-facing uh, image, but they might go home and be completely different. Well, people have bad days. Could have been a bad day. Yeah. Off day. Could have had an argument with his wife. Could have been anything. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Is, is everything moving for y'all, uh, as far as division is concerned, is things moving the way y'all want them to? Like, you feel like y'all should be further along? I mean, one thing I've learned, I mean, yeah, I could say that. I mm -hmm. think we could, we could all say that, though. You know, we even a, a, a someone with $100 million could be like, a, you know, I should be at a billion, you know, by now. Um, but I've learned to just be like, yo, you know, God's timing. God's plan. Mm -hmm. It's going well. Well, let's get into the record. Well, I, I, do, I do have one more question because, yeah. you know, I look at the, the artist Drake. And so I feel like Drake features and, and co-signs of artists do more than artists being actually signed to his label do, if that makes sense. Because Party think, is fantastic. I think a lot of that Y'all are dope. You know what I mean? His approach is very respectful of the creative process. And because we are signed, I think a lot of time he's kind of just like, yo, do you do your thing mm -hmm. and you, you call me in when... It's time. Yeah, call me when it's time. But before that, I don't want you even want to like, I don't want to overstep. Like you guys do what you're doing, and then let me know. You mm -hmm. know, let me know when you want to pass the ball off. But that's not on me. That's on you. I honestly so, think this way was was better because a lot of people who don't know you know you for you, mm -hmm. not the Drake Cole sign. A lot sure. of people didn't know y'all was signed to Drake. 100%. They just heard the record that's true. and loved the music. Mm -hmm. And now when they hear it's a Drake Cole sign, now it's like, oh, even more. I like this group. Right. So that's what I think it's going. So, so at what point do y'all do bring him in on the process? You what said you haven't heard anything yet. Just want to make sense musically. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have something that what it works, you know, works for where he's at, where we're at. You know, I think it's all really just timing with him. As you can see, he's very smart about his music. You know, so for us, it's like it just has to make sense for both. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get into this toxic single right now. <laughs> honest, <laughs> honest single. Come on, we just single. honest, but it's still it's tr if, if, yeah, it, trigger, if it's triggers trigger. people, it's toxic a little what? bit. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. If something triggers you, that doesn't make it toxic. Yeah, it does. No. It's toxic to the, the individual. But that, that means, is not that true. Right. Have you never seen a movie that's just like touched you in some kind of way, and all of a sudden now you're just blaming the movie and say that this is toxic? No. Well, it's it's because when you have trauma, it's because of your unhealed experience. trauma. Yeah, unhealed that's trauma not, that, that you haven't processed. That has nothing to do with what that was delivered to but you. But cheating is a very traumatic thing. But cheating is just real. But let's get let's it get is. into the single, fellas. <laughs> the record is toxic, though. Fellas, I mean, I don't know how you spin that. Fellas, if you've been in a situation, this is the time when you might turn the radio off. Maybe might want to turn it down. Or listen to Daniel's explanation of what the song is. Really Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But you know what's so funny about Daniel's explanation? I understand it, but I can hear a woman saying, "That's some bullshit." No, I, 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 they've been, they've been, they've been hearing it and they've been receiving it. I'm, uh, shout out to the ladies out there. Fair Fair enough. Enough. Let's get into the record. You want to introduce it? Here we go. This is our new record. This is Division. This is if I get caught right here. Breakfast Club. Fellas, it's two minutes and thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> 